Kia ora, hello, and welcome to the final video discussing the plague. In this video, we're going to have a bit of a chat about the socio-economic changes the plague had on Europe, as well as uh, having a discussion about building our impression in the late 14th century um, with the plague in mind. So what were those socio-economic changes? Keeping in mind that, so you have to cover all the socio-economic changes would require multiple videos, with each with their own topic. Um, so I think I'm going to just try to keep this really brief. Uh, because the plague was such an important event and driving force to socio-economic changes through Europe, um, we're going to touch on that uh, in other videos. However, uh, we started covering the plague first because it'll lead on to these other videos. Um, so let's have a chat first about an economic stalemate that was brewing in the 13th century, um, in the uh, early decades of the 14th century. This stalemate really is tied into the aristocracy and, and burgers in the, in the cities, tying in their um, social and economic power and locking out the larger um, bonded peasantry or workers from moving up the up the economic ladder. Um, the stalemate ultimately was broken by the plague, and and because the the cataclysm of the plague um, allowed people to inherit wealth um, where they not would not normally have access to this wealth. Um, we would also see people entering into the workforce. Um, and negotiating for wages. We see a labour shortage as well. Um, people are moving through the workforce, entering into positions where they would not normally have positions. Um, so people entering into the guilds where they're able to, instead of being blocked out by hereditary um, lineage, they're able to become guild masters, uh, they're accumulating wealth, they're starting their own businesses, etc. Um, they're earning wealth, and that wealth, they are then able to move up this socio-economic ladder. So this is really important. Um, so this stalemate is broken. Um, we see attempts uh, in the latter part of the 14th century to break the stalemate in other ways. Uh, we see the peasants revolt, we see the jacquery um, attempting to break it because they've got large amounts of taxes to raise money for the Hundred Years' War on either side of the, um, the channel. Uh, but that's also tied into a sense of dissatisfaction. Um, this dissatisfaction is, is tied into a sense that there's a huge cataclysm that's, that's happened. Um, and they, they have a sense that things aren't the way they should be. Um, there's, there's quotes um, uh, of, if Adam delved and we've toiled, who ruled, that was, it was a slogan used by the Peasants' Revolt, because they knew that the workers were doing all the work, but the, there wasn't anyone who ruled, so why are they being ruled? This d d seemed uh, inherently unfair to them all of a sudden, that while before there was the, the structure of of feudalism that was socially agreed to, now the plays come through, this structural um, system was being eroded, not just from the bottom up, but the top down. Um, so the systems are breaking down and people are looking for a new way to move forward, to build new systems. Um, we see uh, massive changes in the way um, people are thinking about religion because obviously as the plague has come, people are thinking of God punishing them. They're thinking it's the end of the day, you know, end of times. However, the end of times hasn't come. So God must clearly be punishing people. And the church hasn't been able to intervene. So people are looking to other ways to appease God. Um, we see uh, the, the flagellants 
um, whipping, say for example, clergy members uh, in the street. Um, and this is a sense that the clergy itself has become indulgent and, and uh, evil. Um, and we know from accounts that the clergy is, is not particularly well thought of because of their, um, their hypocrisies. Um, and so the, the flagellants are trying to strip the evil from themselves and from, from communities because maybe that's going to free them from the plague. So these are these ideas that maybe the clergy isn't as, as pure and as good as, as what they claim to be. Uh, we see the, the Wycliffe movement in, in England, um, which is an early precursor, very, very, very early precursor to the um, uh, Protestant movement. Um, and, and that idea is also brought um, through into Europe, and, and Jan Hals also picks up on that idea as well of, of reading the Bible in the vernacular um, and, and some of these early ideas. Um, and, and the Peasants' Revolt also picks up on the Wycliffe movement as well. So we've got all these ideas of rebellion and change coming through society. We see the rise of the middle class um, really picking up now because of all this new money and all this new um, engagement in the workforce. So if we have a look at uh, uh, Marciano di Coppo Stefani, um, he talks about people inheriting wealth where they not, would not normally have had it. So uh, what he says here is the heirs to uh, this wealth uh, began to turn up and someone had who had previously had nothing suddenly found himself rich and couldn't believe it was all his. And he even felt himself it wasn't quite right um, because obviously medieval people had a different concept about ownership and wealth. Um, greed wasn't good for the medieval people um, and both men and women began to show off the, with clothes and horses so we start seeing conspicuous consumption and this was a, obviously a real problem for the aristocratic classes because they didn't like that people um, this new burgeoning middle class was starting to um, display themselves as if they were rich. We also see some issues with um, labor and labor negotiations. So if we have a look here at some other quotes, uh, say for example, um, eulogium historium civ temporis, uh, by the time the Black Death stopped at God's command, it had caused such a shortage of servants that men could be not be found to work the land and women and children had to be uh, used to plough the land which was unheard of. So prior to this um, women um, and obviously children according to this quote uh, weren't expected or used to plough the land and, and work um, during the 13th century um, definitely women were banned from working except for in very few rare circumstances, uh, say for example as washerwomen, um, however come the Black Death there was such a shortage of workers, um, women's participation in the workforce and, and paid participation in the workforce which is a much different thing to participation. So women were, were allowed to work um, and they were allowed to be paid for their work uh, however, uh, that payment was still less than men. Um, so we have women working and men working. So we see more wealth entering into the household because now we see potentially two wages. Um, and because of this, people are spending that excess wealth in, into the community and into the household and, and accumulating um, fineries. So this is really important. Um, we also see from Historia Refensis such a shortage of workers followed that churchmen, knights and other great men were forced to thresh their corn, plough their own land and make their own bread. The shortage of workers in every kind of craft and job was so bad that more than a third of the land throughout the whole kingdom was left unfarmed. Labourers and skilled workers became so rebellious that neither king nor law could make them obey.
and almost the whole people turned to evil ways and stopped to more their usual and bad behavior. The harshness of time began to make men bitter. No workman or laborer could take orders from anyone, but those who served did so with ill will and angry spirit. So we see that people are just pulling away from their normal tasks. And, and this is probably um, more of a idea that, well, why should they be working um, for, in the old ways? Um, chroniclers of the time took a very dim view of, of the workers who didn't continue to maintain their orders. Um, and and we and we know that the mon you know the the chronicles were often monastic um, monks who had an interest in um, having bonded servants doing their work in their for their monasteries because they were obviously owners of serfs and and maintained um, some lands themselves so they tended to take a quite a dim view of the workers refusing to work and, and demanding labor um, and pay for their labor. So we see workers leaving the land and seeking wealth either in the cities or for a, a worker or a, should I say a, a lord or a landowner who would um, pay them money for, for that work. We also see laborers leaving the land and just entering abandoned farms or or workshops or whatever else and just taking ownership of them because there was such wealth just left unoccupied and and just taking ownership of it and just entering into their own um, auspices and taking up trade so this is something that was just happening um, obviously we we see accounts of um, lords trying to hunt down bonded servants who had fled um, because this was still quite an issue um, so we've got all these large issues going on in society where workers are entering into trades and demanding money for their servants and their upper classes not sure what to do. Um, obviously that results in um, uprisings and, and punitive actions. However, ultimately um, we see that the 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 workers' revolts aren't successful um, for many different reasons. However, it's the economic revolts are the ones that are successful. Uh, and we'll talk about the economic revolts in, in later videos and the, and the rise of the middle class in, in later videos. Um, these are going to be much more um, successful and, and have changed, you know, those massive changes um, uh, of what really impacts society in the 14th century society. So thinking now that we've had these massive changes, we're thinking now that massive amounts of people have passed away um, and died in, in horrible um, circumstances and we've had this this huge amounts of psychological trauma on people. Um, We've seen people enter into rebellion. We've seen, seen people become belligerent and, and shocked and, and people lose massive amounts of family members. Um, we've seen people accumulate large amounts of wealth. Um, how, do you, how do you think that might affect your impression um, as, as a reenactor? Um, we, we really need to start thinking, um, I believe, as, as reenactors, less as um, building an impression as a snapshot of a uh, an image or um, an effigy. While those things can be helpful, and I'll, I'll do some videos on, on building um, my impressions on images, um, I believe that if we're trying to create a, an impression of a, of a society, we need to understand the society much closer and clearer. Um, so keeping in mind that the 14th century and the, after the plague has, has subsided and then we've got um, the pestilence secundus, the second plague in, in sort of the 
1360s. So the second lot of plagues come through. Like how old would your character, your, your your characterization or impression have have been? Um, are, are you thinking of having someone who's who's alive during that time? You know, if you're doing talks, that that's going to be a really important thing to be able to keep in context for um, your impression. And keeping in mind that if you're doing an impression, say, after the first plague and after the second plague, if you're doing an impression of someone who's a, a labourer um, or, or someone who's in that bonded servant um, class, you know, that, that nice bottom part of that chunky pyramid, um, that pyramid's starting to erode now. And depending on where you are in Europe and, and you know, whatever else, like, you, you're accumulating wealth. You're, you have access to so much more um, fine things. And, and that's not to say that you're dressing in, in silks and and wearing ermine I'm not I'm not promoting that I'm but what I'm saying is you have access to so much more wealth um, your 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 got a larger social mobility and that social mobility is is resulting in an interesting stratification um, and that stratification means that we're seeing this middle class or this worker class to that that is starting to reflect an idea that we would have today where we've got the mega wealthy, the, the ruling class sitting on top, you know, your, your, you know, your film stars and movie stars, your, your mega millionaires, you know, your Jeff Bezoses and your Elon Musks and your Bill Gateses, um, you know, Elizabeth, the Queen of England's and whomever else is, um, they're sitting at the top still. And then you've got your millionaires who, who, you know, sitting underneath them. And then you've got your people of all these different stratas with different amounts of wealth and different amounts of social capital moving around. Um, and we're, we're starting to see that now as opposed to um, earlier periods of the, of the um, Middle Ages where we've got a nice big chunk sitting at the top holding all the social capital and all the social wealth and economic power. Uh, and then you've got everyone else and and they've not got as much ability to command this, that that economic wealth um, and and so start thinking now how would I build an impression knowing what I know now how would that plague have affected me as a person building this impression would the would the plague have perhaps impoverished me because the plague did impoverish people it didn't just make everyone insta rich um while it you know while it did make many people rich um i i think it's really important however to keep in mind that this it's not an excuse to say oh well i i'm not going to uh justify with reasonable research why this hat is a hat that I'm wearing from Northern Europe but I'm from Southern France um, and this is clearly a Scandinavian hat and I just inherited it because the plague happened that's not a reasonable assumption but we're saying well look you perhaps are somebody who's um, more you know you don't say oh well I used to be poor, but now I'm rich. But, you know, maybe that's a way of presenting the social changes um, that the, the plague brought to people. Saying, well, look, m carpenters used to be like this, but now they're like this because at this period we've got this social change. It's big social changes are coming through society. And that's that's why my impression is of a, of a, of a burger. Um, and that's why my impression is of someone who's, who commands quite a significant amount of wealth and why I'm able to have such um, expensive items because I have that wealth. And is that wealth the same as a large landowner? Well, probably not, you know, but we, we have private landowners um, who... 
who could command uh, as much equipment, say for example, as a knight, because we know they did, uh, because they bought their ways into the knightly class, and they accumulated that wealth and speculated that wealth because of the plague. Um, so that's that's a very interesting thing to keep in mind. Um, always think about what history is is doing in the background when you're building your impression because history and reenactment are ultimately intertwined. Um, you don't exist in a vacuum and and history doesn't inter you know, exist in a vacuum and I think if we if we keep those two things in mind what would have been happening at the time when I'm building my impression um, you you can have a greater understanding of what equipment you would have you can have a greater understanding of how things would have moved around Europe you would have a greater understanding of what fashions would have been available at the time and and what social interactions you would be having I hope that helps you. I hope that's insightful. Um, if you want to know more about the plague uh, and how many people died, how the plague arrived, please watch the, pro you know, the previous videos that we have up. Um, otherwise, if you enjoyed this, please like, comment, and remember to subscribe.